This question asks, will the chat GPT make software engineers unemployed? I don't think so. We're not at that level with AI. And frankly, I don't know if we'll ever be at that level. Software engineers will be focused on different things. And you might be able to use chat GPT as a tool to help you, I guess, approach a problem. But I don't think it'll have the creativity to actually replace software engineers, at least not for now. And I don't think in the near future. Hi everyone, it's KJ here. And yesterday I went to Instagram and posted a story asking all of you to ask me literally anything. There were a bunch of really good questions in there, so I wanna answer as many as I possibly can. So let's get right into it. Do you have any advice for someone nervous about leaving home to head off for college? This is something that I actually was talking to my friends about yesterday, and it's tough. I moved completely across the country from LA to Boston for school, and it was something that was pretty tough on me at the time, tougher than I even expected it to be. And my one piece of advice would probably be to make sure to keep those connections back home. It'll help you from feeling homesick and nowadays it's really easy with FaceTime and Zoom and everything. So just, yeah, make sure to continue to reach out. Till this day, I FaceTime my dad and brother for every single Laker game and we watch those together. So if you can have stuff like that, I think it makes the distance not feel as great. Are you still planning on going back to get a PhD sometime in the future? Short answer is no, unless I have some sort of weird midlife crisis where I feel like I need that extra degree. I feel like I've learned so much while working in the startups that I am working with that I would rather try and start something on my own than do something like go back to school for a PhD. What's your advice for creating a startup whilst at uni? So starting something while at a university is pretty hard, but fun fact, the founders of the current company that I'm working at, Posh Technologies, they're both MIT grads and they both started the initial idea while they were at MIT. So it's definitely possible. Um, I would say that you really have to just focus on your time management and balancing. I think at school, there is a lot more time than you realize to actually do other things. And that's why I was able to start this YouTube channel, for example. So just make sure you're very scheduled out and have time to, yes, do well in your classes, but then also put some time to actually develop this idea that you have. Advice for engineers during recession times. Yeah, so unfortunately, we're in unprecedented times and like I even saw the impact of that this past year. Companies are losing their profits really fast, stock prices are going down, and the first place that they can go to cut substantial amounts of their budget is by laying people off. So the main advice that I would probably give to someone in a position where they feel kind of uneasy is to make sure that the people around you understand the value that you're bringing on a day-to-day -day basis. The people that they will lay off are people that they view as periphery and not really essential for the day-to-day -day operation. But if you continue to put in the work and you make sure that others realize that work you're putting in, then you will never be on the outskirts in certain decision making. You will be pivotal and you just won't be in consideration for layoffs in the future. Unless obviously the company goes down totally, then I think that's a discussion for a different time. For a 21 year old, what will be that one piece of advice? Okay, so my number one piece of advice for a 21 year old would probably be to not be afraid to fail. I want you to go and find your passion, but in order to do that, you're going to have to experience different things and some of those things you won't like, some of those things you won't be really good at, but don't be afraid of that failure because eventually you'll get to the point where you experience enough things where you know what you want, you know what you don't want, you know what you can do and you know what you can't do. And that's when you'll be able to find success. Are you still working at a startup? Yes. The current company that I'm working at now is still definitely a startup. There's only 70 or so people on this team, but it is a big difference from being one of the first five or one of the first 10 people in a specific team. So yes, long story short, I'm still working at a startup, but my role is drastically different. I don't have this massive load of responsibilities to take care of on a day-to-day -day basis anymore like I used to. 
And frankly, that's why I chose to be in the position that I am right now. What do you think about 3D printing technologies? I mean, I love 3D printers. They're really awesome to play with. They're really awesome to just try and make something in CAD and print it out. It's really going to, and already has opened up a lot of boundaries as to what things people can create, can invent, can ideate about. There's endless possibilities. Now it's like artists could draw on a piece of paper, but now you can concoct something in 3D and actually just bring it to life in a couple hours, which is insane to even think about. How would you learn coding if you were to start again as a noob? Any source best to learn coding? I truly believe that the best way to learn something is by doing it yourself. For coding specifically, if I were to relearn coding today, I would probably focus on two main things. One, I'd come up with a coding project that is doable based on my knowledge level, something that I can continue to apply my learning towards over time. The cool thing about coding is that you can always iterate and add new features as you learn more. Second, I would probably also sign up for Brilliant. Brilliant allows you to learn interactively with fun, hands-on lessons in math, science, and computer science. Back in the day, I watched lecture videos, but interactive learning is actually six times more effective in teaching you new concepts than lecture videos. Instead of just memorizing, Brilliant will teach you how to think about code or any other topics in STEM by guiding you through fun problem solving. This will give you real problem solving experience, and since every problem comes with a step-by-step -step solution, you'll be able to understand the reasoning behind each step. Join the millions of people already learning on Brilliant with a special offer just for my viewers. Head to brilliant.org slash kjhardrick to get started for free with Brilliant's interactive lessons. The first 200 listeners will get 20% off an annual membership. Shout out to Brilliant for being such a great learning tool and for sponsoring this video. Do you get envious of others who are more successful than you? Why or why not? Yeah, that's a great question. I actually do not get envious of the people that are more successful than me. I really enjoy actually hearing success stories because I like to see where other people draw the line of successful or not successful. And honestly, success is very subjective to the person where although Elon Musk is very successful in terms of money, I feel like I'm very successful in terms of having a decent job that I really enjoy at a company that I really enjoy a nice place that I can call home, loved ones that all support me. And yeah, I feel like I'm as successful as I could be in this moment, given my current conditions. And I like seeing how other people are successful and living their best lives too, like nothing against them. And my definition of success might change tomorrow or next month, but right now I feel pretty darn successful. What were your hardest times in semesters? I would say the hardest semesters that I was a part of had to do with project-based classes. I feel like in high school and in other classes earlier in MIT, I could study my way into doing well on problem sets and doing well into tests. But when project classes really came along, I had to really think outside the box, especially if that project is has little nuances that haven't been done before or are unique to our specific use case. So it takes a little more ingenuity there, which is really challenging, but also what I really enjoy to do on a day-to-day -day basis. Was engineering hard? That's a pretty general question. I think engineering as a field is one of the more difficult fields to study in school because of all the little details, the math, the physics, or whatever science is involved with that specific engineering, and putting it all together in overall problem solving and using the current tools to actually implement anything. The process of putting everything together is what makes engineering feel difficult, but I feel like as long as you're building cool things that you enjoy, the easiness comes with your comfort in building something. What is the most required skill for engineers after graduation besides having good technical skill? I think the biggest skill in general that people overlook is the ability to work in a team. Once you get your engineering degree, you're not going to be working alone on anything unless it's your own side project. 
you're going to have to work with project managers, with designers, with other engineers, and the ability to relay information between different teams and between non-technical and technical teams is really pivotal in ensuring your success in your career. What kind of company would you like to create? I want to create a company that helps a lot of people at the same time using new technology, like using conversational AI, AI in general, or just new models that can predict and give you information that's useful on a day-to-day -day basis. I have some ideas in mind that I would like to pursue, but I'll keep them to myself for now. I just, in general, want to use technology to help a wide range of people, and I think a company gives me the avenue to do that. Hi KJ, do you have any pet projects beside your work? What do you do to develop as a software engineer? Yeah, so I actually do have other side projects. Some of them include automatic trading bots that use indicators and send information between servers to buy and sell certain trade scenarios. Those get in the weeds of different things that I work on on a day-to-day -day basis as well and using cloud services and whatnot. And I think just diving in those specific services and executing a full project like that gives you a lot more awareness for how systems work. And developing as a software engineer in general is pretty broad because there are definitely specific people that do different roles. There's some people on the front end, some people on the back end, and some people integrating everything together. So I can't really speak to all software engineers, but find the aspect of software engineering that interests you and do little side projects for those specific ones. How do you avoid getting stressed dealing with the challenges of life? Yeah, so for this one, I am just going to point you to my last video where I talked a lot about this. But in general, just be open to talking about the different stresses you have. You're not alone. Leverage your loved ones, leverage your community, and also understand that the things that you feel right now are temporary and that you'll look back on these times and understand that those stresses that you felt weren't always that necessary. Overall, how challenging was MIT? I think MIT is <laughs> very difficult. It's a difficult place because you are given so much information all at once. And I understand that there's different engineering schools and the general concepts are the same, but then being around people that are all seemingly ambitious that all hold themselves to a certain standard, it really lifts up the group as a whole. So then you do feel a little more pressure to work harder on a specific problem set or study harder for a test. And when you do those tests, if there's any sort of curve in that class, then it's going to be curved against other people who feel like they're best at that specific subject. So I think there's a lot of factors that make MIT difficult. It's really tough, I feel like, because of the pressure that is put on people from the environment that you're in. How to be set up for success after a semester of failure. Yeah, for situations like this, I feel like you just need to roll with a short-term memory. If you really dwell on the past, then it's going to start weighing on you and that weight is going to get too much and you're going to start feeling like you're inadequate. And then it's just going to enter this cycle of not being successful because you don't think you have the chance to be successful. So I feel like you just have to nip it in the bud right there. Say, look, next year I'm going to focus on this, that, and the other to help improve my situation in the semester and just go from there. Don't dwell on all of the negativity from the last semester if it didn't go as planned. What is the key to manage everything in life nicely as a college student? I think I touched on this a little before, but just make sure that you have everything that you're trying to get accomplished or all your responsibilities all put together in some sort of unified environment, whether that's using Notion or Google calendars or just notes in your phone. Make sure that you keep tabs of everything that you have going on. And generally you have more time in a day than you expect. A lot of that time is wasted, like scrolling on social media or just sitting mindlessly daydreaming. 
And if you actually just section off your life in a way that's reasonable, you'll see that you can actually get everything or generally close to everything that you want to get done, done. Upload more video at least a week. Yeah, so I definitely want to get back to uploading a video once per week. I'm also looking to start consistently posting on other platforms like TikTok or Instagram Reels. So definitely stay tuned for that in 2023. My health has gotten a lot better, so I will be able to post a lot more and I'll feel more confident in doing so. So yeah, be patient with me. 2023 is going to be pretty great. What did you learn this year? I think the biggest thing that I learned was to just be patient that certain situations just need to play themselves out and at the end you'll be stronger more experienced and just have a better perspective on things in the moment it might feel really drawn out but looking back i feel like 2022 just flew by so yeah i think the biggest thing that i'm taking into 2023 is just patience yeah, thank you so much for asking all of the great questions that you did on Instagram. If you want to be part of a future video like this, make sure to follow me on Instagram because that's where I usually ask people to ask me those questions. If there's enough interest from my viewers, I'll definitely make a pretty frequent live stream where you all can ask questions live. If not, then I'll make these videos occasionally like I did in the past. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great holiday season, everybody. Enjoy the new year, and I'll see you in the next one.